Hello. Freedom Guy 55 here again. And uh, I wanted to talk to you about, uh, well, Halloween's coming up, you know? And I was just thinking um, to give some more movie recommendations. I've given some before, of course, on throwaway action films. I thought, well, since Halloween's coming up and many people want to see horror films, what horror films do you want to see and all that kind of stuff? Well, you know, I mean, I guess I decided to be an asshole and say, hey, Here's some stuff that you can you know, can see. But um, anyway, uh, these are certain particular uh, recommendations that I'm going to make. And I, I'm thinking about making a few other videos on the subject. But right now, I'm uh, the first, the first uh, hopefully this will be the first video, but I might make a couple on it. But I don't know. But the first video I want to make is um, the first five um, uh, movies from Dark Castle Entertainment. Dark Castle Entertainment was, or, what started as a horror movie production company uh, that was founded by three veterans of the Tales from the Crypts uh, series. It's not a, it's not a horror movie uh, company now as much anymore. I mean, they've produced uh, bloody action and as well as, you know, it, they, they kind of gotten into more of a, it being more pulp culture than just horror movies. But, anyway, it's a horror movie, it started as a horror movie production company that was, uh, that was founded by the three veterans of Tales from the Crypt. Two executive producers, one producer. The producer, um, one of the producers, uh, of Tales from the Crypt is also a famous producer as well, who has, um, um, produced various amount of films, but, uh, one that comes to mind that he's done recently in, pr in producing is, uh, Valkyrie. So, um, he's, he's relatively famous for a certain particular films, and no one really ever knows him, because, you know, who do you know? When, well, producers, really. But actually, the other one, the executive producer from Tales from the Crypt series, but the founder of this, one of the founders, was also, uh, is actually more well-known as a producer, um, and has done certain various thrillers and whatnot, as well as action films that are recognizable. One that comes up to my head is, of course, the uh, Matrix trilogy, and uh, it, that name and that person's name is, of course, Joel Silver. And um, then the other founder is more known as a director than he is as a producer, even though that he has produced things as well, especially movies in this production company. Um, I don't think he's produced as much anymore, but, you know, from this, uh, production company, but, uh, you know, I think he's gone on to do his own things. But, uh, that director, uh, famous director, is, uh, the gentleman that had directed Castaway and, uh, Forrest Gump and, of course, Contact. You know him as the one, the only, Robert Zemeckis. Yes, he is one of the founders as well. Dark Castle Entertainment gets its name from uh, William Castle. Uh, that's where the castle comes from. Dark, I'm pretty much you, you pretty much sure you know. Horror movie. Um, anyway, William Castle is uh, was this kind of um, I guess producer director or whatnot uh, who would uh, pretty much dive into certain particular kind of audience participation, unwilling audience participation. They didn't know or. Or they, he would ask them to have some sort of uh, audience participation. Uh, he would like shock the uh, shock the chairs in the theater, or um, or he would wind up uh, having people put on special glasses so that they can see something on the screen that they wouldn't see it without the glasses. You know, stuff like that. Certain particular kind of gimmick stuff that would get people enticed to kind of participate into the movies. We've seen this kind of stuff today as well. Um, uh, more advanced within, say, you know, movies with chairs that, you know, you wind up moving at arcades and whatnot. I mean, I, I, I believe that this guy's the pretty much granddaddy of this that made it so popular. Well, anyway, it is kind of based upon, uh, um, or kind of, uh, done as to honor him. Well, anyway, now on to the movies. Um, the first movie on the list is Last House, or no, I'm sorry, <laughs> duh, House on Haunted Hill. House on Haunted Hill is a William Castle classic. Um, it ha originally had Vincent Price in it, 
you know? Uh, well, in this remake, it um, it's about this rich tycoon who winds up uh, inviting people to an insane asylum that is supposedly haunted by certain particular kind of inhabitants, as well as doctors who died tragically when the uh, patients escaped and such. Well, anyway, uh, he invites other rich individuals to spend one one night in this insane asylum that's supposedly haunted, it, it, and he will give them a million dollars. So, and the story progresses, and you find out that the actual, you know, insane asylum is haunted. Anyway, uh, it has a lot of recognizable uh, faces in this movie. Uh, you have Jeffrey Rush from Shine. You have Famaka jo uh, Jansen. I hopefully I'm saying her name right. Um, who was in Who was uh, go in Golden Golden Eye? Uh, played Zeni Onatop. Um, you also have Chris Kattan from Saturday Night Live, and of course the Night at the Roxbury dude. Uh, you also have. Uh, uh, Tay Diggs, who uh, played in the movie version of Rent, as well as also he played in an action movie with Christian Bale called Equilibrium. Also, <clears throat> you have uh, Ali Lauder, way before she played uh, in Heroes. She was the mother of, you know, um, Micah. No. Well, anyway, uh, also you have Bridget Wilson who played uh, Sonya Blade in uh, the first Mortal Kombat film. And you have Jeffrey Combs, who played Herbert West in the uh, Reanimator series. So you have a lot of these recognizable characters, and most of them are people who you didn't even expect would ever really be in a horror film. Um, oh yeah, it also has uh, Peter Gabriel, uh, or I think it's like, Peter, not Peter Gabriel, it's... Um, uh, Gallagher, I'm sorry. Peter Gallagher. Yeah, Peter Gallagher, who's, uh, I didn't know if you want, wanted to know, but he's the uh, guy who's, uh, you know, in a coma in uh, while you were sleeping. Um, anyway, this movie I do recommend because it's got a very, very eerie uh, cinematography that actually really does work um, for a horror film and, you know, kind of got a spooky atmosphere. And I think that... Um, You'll pretty much like it. It's really upscale for a horror film. Second film happens to be um, blah, 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 um, uh, 13 Ghosts. This is also another William Castle classic that's been remade. In this remake, it's about a rich tycoon, always rich tycoons. Anyway, rich tycoon who winds up um, uh, being obsessed with capturing ghosts. And he captures 12 ghosts, but he dies in the process. Well, anyway, um, he, he basically gives his inheritance and a house to uh, his, his nephew. Well, the thing is, is that when they get into this house and whatnot, it seems to be some sort of like contraption that is, uh, also has the ghosts in it that is releasing them. And now they're in danger, and they're locked in, and there's no way out. So they're trying to find the mystery of what's going on with this house. Um, and being locked in with the evil ghosts. I do recommend this movie just basically due to the fact that it has a lot of really good like special effects, especially within the process of, of the ghosts, and this kind of like really huge gimmick about the ghosts, because each ghost has some sort of specific signature about themselves that seems interesting, like some sort of like what you would see out of a comic book character or whatnot. It's, it, it's, it's an interesting kind of thing. Uh, as far as anything else, the set design... And the makeup special effects are pretty much what really drive this film very well. This also this film also has a lot of recognizable characters in the film. You also you have um, F. Murray Abraham, who played in Amadeus. You also had you know who was Amadeus's rival, and uh, you also have um, uh, Shannon Elizabeth, who played Nadia in. Uh, the American Pie series. You also have uh, Matthew Lillard, who played Stu in the uh, uh, Scream, and also played uh, Serial 
in Hackers. And then you also have uh, a man who played, uh, the man who played Monk, Tony Shalhoub. Well before he played Monk, he played in this film. And he plays, I believe, the nephew. <clears throat> okay, third film. Third film is uh, called Ghost Ship. Uh, it's about the salvage team that gets hinted at this uh, boat. And this isn't a remake or anything. This is actually pretty much original, but it's kind of based upon ghost ships out in the sea and such like that. Well, anyway, this, they get, this salvage team gets hinted at this ghost ship that's, you know, in the middle of the ocean. And they're going to it, right? And, and they're going to go to it to salvage whatever they can to, you know, for any valuables or whatnot. And, uh, they find out it's haunted and they're trapped on it. And, um, well, there's this kind of hidden mystery of finding out what happened within this, uh, this ship. It's a pretty, it's pretty good. I do like it due to the fact that it does, it goes back to that kind of cinematography uh, with uh, House on Haunted Hill. And it pretty much focuses more upon that direction and it kind of steals the whole thing. There is not as much recognizable characters in this film as there were in the other two. But I would say, I would say uh, there are certain individuals that you've seen before. Isaiah Washington, Gabriel Byrne. I mean, Gabriel Byrne, who played, of course, the devil, or a possessed man, you know, possessed man, uh, a man possessed by the devil, in End of Days. You also remember him from, of course, The Usual Suspects and whatnot. Uh, and you also uh, have a guy that you know today if you actually see Dexter. He's the guy who plays Quinn on Dexter. Yeah, uh, Desmond Harrington is his name. Uh, yeah, so uh, there are certain particular kind of recognizable people, but not as much as the other two. Anyway, fourth film. Fourth film is um, basically Gothica. Gothica has, uh, of course, Holly Berry, uh, Robert Downey Jr., uh, Penelope Cruz, you know, um, Holly Berry, you know, uh, I, I don't think I know, need to tell you. I mean, Holly Berry from Monster Ball, you know, you got um, uh, Robert Downey Jr. from uh, Iron Man, uh, you got... Uh, uh, Penelope Cruz from Blow, you got, uh, and you've also got Charles S. Dutton from, uh, Low Down Dirty Shame, and, uh, of course, uh, the TV series, uh, short-lived TV series, I believe, Rock. Well, anyway, um, this is about a psychiatrist who, uh, almost runs a woman off the road, she goes and tries to help the woman, and she touches her, and all of a sudden, the next thing she knows, she's in an insane asylum. And you got to find out what happened to her because she missed about, like, I think a week of her life or so. And she's trying to figure out what happened to her along the way. And there's this kind of hidden mystery about that. And I thought that was actually interesting. This movie does give a really kind of eerie feeling that I think is um, a really kind of eerie feeling, a really kind of good acting. Um, and I do love the kind of mystery that surrounds this particular type of movie. So I do recommend it. Well, anyway, that's pretty much it. And uh, for this time, I will give you the last film on the next video. And I thank you for your time, and have a nice day.